Hello, welcome back. I'm Shelf Unit, and this is my continuing Let's Play of Civilization 2. Okay, it's been a little while since I've played, which is annoying because I normally play this quite a lot. Um, so, last time, last episode, we discovered we were on a pretty small island. I mean, this is the world. I think it might even be bigger than this, but this is our little world. And we've currently got three cities. I think we can probably get another city down here, another one here, or here maybe, and another one up here. So another one, two, three cities at least on here. Normally I would probably build a bit closer together just to pack a few more cities on since I've only got such a few, but there's a little island down here which I want to try and explore and get to very shortly. Um, okay, so we appear to have built our first unit in Nottingham and I'm going to get our second one there shortly. I want to fortify him in there. And now we're on to, since we've got no other active units, we are on to uh, just pressing return to get the turn to go along. So that'll go up to there and our settlers have now finished building the road. Our population is now 400,000. What can we do? Where can we go? Yeah, I think I want to build a city here. Yeah. So I'm just going to build road. Whoa, that's loud. Built a library in London. So our science is now massively increased up to nine points. Um, we've got a temple, we've got city walls. We've got a lot of people. Um... I don't think I want to build a marketplace right now because I think it'll be fairly useless. I'm going to build settlers first and then I'm going to build a col the Colossus, I think, if nobody else has. Oh, there's our second people down here. Um, I'm going to build some more settlers in here. And we're just, I just want to get my cities done as quickly as possible. Build a road there. York's build a library. Let's go with the horseback riding. Okay. Description. Horse was first domesticated for transportation and warfare by the tribesmen of the Asian steppes. These tribes people use their superior mobility and speed to overwhelm the proto-civilizations just rising in the southeast Europe and Middle East. In approximately 2000 BC, domestic horses were introduced into Babylonia. And in the next several centuries, horses had spread throughout much of Europe and northern Africa. It was not long before nearly every civilization had put horses to work as field animals and as a means of transportation. Horses also went on to play an important role in the military conflicts of nearly every civilization in the world both as mounts for horsemen and cavalry, and as draft animals for pulling war chariots and heavy weapons into battle. Okay, so, what do we want to build next? It's a good question. I'm thinking polytheism, so I can get to monotheism and then the chapel. But our goal right now is engineering, so we need to research the wheel. But I want to get King Richard's crusade up and running. So they've built a temple, a library, and city walls. I think they mm, going to build a trireme here. So I can explore a bit around this and see exactly what this is. So I'm going to go down here and build another road. As we know, those... Oh, get some. Have we done this already? I think we have, yep. So we're building, continuing this. This is our throne room. It has no effect on the game, so... London builds settlers. One of these days I'll be able to sort of explain what I'm doing with the other settler unit. So we're going to change that and I'm going to go straight onto the Colossus. Since it's only 23 turns and we've got some gold, we can speed that up a little bit. So I want to build roads on the grassland with squares, because those are the most productive grassland. 
And I think I'm going to do the same up here with York. First of all, and then I'm going to build a city here. Which is going to be Hastings. Yep, and they can use the whale, which is extremely highly useful for uh, both shields, resources, and food. And the, um, the trade as well, lots of. And the Chinese have undertaken the Great Library. That's okay for me. Nottingham has built settlers now. I want to change now to city walls in there to make sure that's all nice and defended and build a road there. And we've now got the wheel. The invention of the wheel represented a major turning point in human civilization. The first wheels, discs carved from solid wood may have been built as early as 3500 BC. Ah, whoopsie doo. The earliest use of this device was the potter's wheel, used to spin and shape clay pottery. But we can do pottery before this, so hmm. it was not long before the true potential of the wheel was discovered, and wheeled carts soon replaced the sledge as means of transportation. Rapid developments such as wheels consisting of a ring and with radial spokes made the wheel even more practical by reducing its weight. By using the wheel, mankind gained the ability to work more efficiently and travel more quickly. Besides its use in transportation, the wheel went on to become the basic principle behind almost every mechanical device. So now we can get engineering. Which I will be building. Right, so let's build a road there. We've got our trireme here. What are we building in York? We've got three tacks, so increasing it by 50% will give us a minimum of plus one, hopefully plus two. So I'm going to build a marketplace there. We are now going to go around and explore. Okay, this place needs to... I want to build a city over here. Triremes need to um, be kept adjacent to uh, land, otherwise you've got a big chance of losing them. As they are not technically really seaworthy vessels. But I am going to... Move this guy down here, move this one across here. We've now got 600,000 people. Ooh, interesting. What size and shape is this land? So Hastings has just built its first defensive unit. Centering the unit there by pressing C. Ooh, it's quite a big, big world down here. Ah. Uh, balls. We have uncovered another race. Now we have engineering. I want to get polytheism. And I just missed engineering, so I'll go back and see what that is. Civilization advances. Blah, 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 blah. Engineering description. Engineering is the application of scientific mathemat and mathematical principles to the design and or manufacture of theoretical systems and physical objects. Prior to the mid-18th century, all engineering functions were carried out by military engineers. Their work involved the construction of roads, bridges, fortifications, and the performance of other duties relating to the military. In the late 18th century, civil engineers took over all non-military engineering functions. Other fields of engineering prior to the 20th century included mining engineers, who designed mines and methods of mining, and mechanical engineers who dealt with the design and construction of machinery. As new technologies developed, new fields of engineering developed along with them. Today there are engineers specifically trained in nearly every field, from electronics and computers to chemistry and atomics. Okay, now that changes what I'm going to be making here. Because whilst the Colosseum is good, King Richard's Crusade is great. <coughs> I am not happy with this. Not happy at all. And now we've discovered another race. I'm going to go across here and irrigate these forests, and that's the second person in Hastings, and because we're keeping beginning to find more people now, I'm building city walls, and I'm going to create a city right there. Mm. 
Okay, let's quickly get back there. Chinese have abandoned their project. Um, Chinese have taken, um, taken a new project. Okay, so we've got a marketplace in York and we've discovered polytheism. Polytheism is the belief that the world and the environment is ruled or controlled by a number of different gods or divinities. Many ancient religions were polytheistic, notably those of the Egyptians, Greeks, Norse and Romans. Often polytheistic religions have different gods for each force of nature and earthly phenomenon. For instance, a sun god, a moon god, a god of thunder, a god of the forests, and so forth. The reason for such diversity in divine beings probably stems from ancient civilizations attempting to find explanations for natural events they could not understand. Although some isolated examples still exist today, most polytheistic religions have either died out or evolved into monotheism. Okay. So. What do I want? I'm going to go straight for monotheism. Because that'll give me the chapel. And with the chapel, I can build aqueduct everywhere. So, what am I going to build here? Hmm, what am I going to build here? Might have to be more settlers. Let's see if we've started on the Colossus now. Mm -hmm. Not even now has city walls. And they're growing rapidly, so I want a temple there. That's a big land. I think I'm going to build there. Coventry. Okay. York has built settlers. Um, they built three tanks. They've got a marketplace. Oh, what am I going to build? What am I going to build? Build another trireme. So I want to go and explore places. Um, I'm going to put another city down here. That's the first unit there. Now we've discovered monotheism. Monotheism is the belief that there is only one God. Perhaps the oldest monotheistic religion is Judaism. The original Israelites were polytheistic in a sense, since they did not deny the existence of other gods in addition to their own. However, after being exiled to Babylonia in 50, 586 BC, the Judeans turned to a truly monotheistic religion, where the God of Israel was seen as the universal God ruling the destiny of all nations. The scriptures of Judaism became part of the teachings of the two most widespread monotheistic religions, Christianity and Islam. More developed than earlier polytheistic beliefs, the monotheistic religions tend to encompass the structure and structure the entire lifestyles of the people who practice them. Okay, so after that... I want invention. And how long before that happens? Okay, I think I can afford to buy it. It's only going to take... It's going to take quite a lot of more turns, but if I complete it, you'll see how much production in here will go up. Okay. Crusades and that has 
doubled the production and hit 18. So now I'm quite happy to build the Colossus, I think, first. Temple in New in Nottingham, sorry. I'm going to build settlers in there. And just brighten and beautify our throne room. London, see, now that London has hit the maximum number of people, I eight prior to the aqueduct, we require one. Once we've built the chapel, we can do so. Has built city walls. I'm going to build a temple in there as well now. I've got the second person in Cambridge, so I can build city walls there. Just fortify them. I've now got over a million people. So I'm going to go here. I've got invention now. Contrivance of a previously unknown device, method, or process which can in turn be used to accomplish an objective in a way is thought to be impossible, is known as invention. Essentially, inventiveness is the ability to take one or more newly discovered concepts and find a way to put them to practical use. The earliest inventions of mankind date back to ancient stone and metal tools used for hunting, digging, and other everyday tasks. After writing aloud the ideas of various civilizations to be exchanged and studied, mankind's inventions became increasingly more useful and innovative. Most inv inventions are geared towards improving or simplifying human existence in some way. Often, inventions themselves make it possible to make new discoveries, which then go on to inspire better and more innovative inventions. Okay, now I want a university to increase my science production even more. Okay. Coventry have got their first person. Let's fortify them in there. And I'm going to build here. Mm. I'm going to road there. Nottingham has now built settlers. I'm going to build a library in Nottingham now to increase the science production. And I'm going to send up these guys. Oh, got a second trireme. Now I want to build Crusaders Barracks because I want to turn this into a unit production in. And this will give me veteran units. So let's leave them there and head up and down. Hmm, that's annoying. Let's just move them there. I'm gonna send this around. Those down there. I'm going to build a city here. See the three squares here show that this has been taken away by other other cities for use with their growing areas. So I've now only got these squares here that I can use. So. Now, because London is building the Colossus, it generates a square of trade in every square that has um, that already generates trade. So I'm going to build roads in all the areas that don't have roads and irrigate all the areas that aren't irrigated already. What am I going to do with this ship? I think I'm just going to leave it there. Oh, okay, I over clicked. And there's the danger. The ship has been lost at sea. Well, that's dang annoying. Let's change the abandon. Hastings has built a temple now. Um, I don't want a settlers in there. I'll just build a library, I think. 
Increased science production on London has the Colossus. So everywhere now has doubled its trade, and so we're getting double the tax and double the science. Now I'm going to build the chapel. And I'm going to sleep there. So that unit just goes to sleep, and I don't need to worry about it until another unit approaches it. So let's just make the walls more beautiful. Chinese have done that. We've discovered the university. Institutes of higher learning, such as the Academy of Plato in Athens, which taught advanced philosophical principles, existed in the ancient world. It was not until the 12th century, however, that the model for the modern university system was born. In the Middle Ages, some royal governments and ecclesiastical organizations founded exclusive schools dedicated to training young men in specific professions. At that time, excuse me, each university specialized in a single topic like law, theology, music, or medicine. Through the centuries, universities diversified to include a number of different fields of study. Modern universities consist of several faculties, or colleges, each of which has a specific, a specific curriculum. In addition to their roles as learning institutions, universities have, since their inception, acted as centers for scientific research and advancement. Okay, let's get some trade up and running, because then I can send, build caravans. London, yeah, I know London requires aqueduct. And these caravans can be built in cities with nothing else really to build. And then I can send them and help build the wonder. So, let's build another road there. Chinese have abandoned the library again. York has built barracks. So, in York, I am now going to build crusaders. Coventry's got its second person, so I can build the city walls. They're going to take a while, though, because there's not much in the way of um, production happening around there. Let's fortify them. The Chinese have done the library again, and we've discovered trade very quickly. One of the oldest and most widespread social institutions is the exchange of goods or trade. Most ancient trade consisted of barter, where two traders would exchange goods with one another. The widespread practice of trade allowed civilizations to exchange raw materials and goods when they had, which they had in abundance or could easily produce for items that were rare or non-existent in their geographic region. The introduction of regulated currency that could be exchanged for items resulted in easier, more convenient trade. Merchants soon roamed the world, connecting different lands with webs of economic interdependence. In addition to goods and profits, traders also brought back tales and technology from these foreign lands. Well-traveled traders like Marco Polo were among the most learned sources on the cultures and traditions of foreign lands. Okay, what do we want? I'm going to go warrior code now, because it's going to be fairly simple to, to research, and I'm going to go up here and irrigate this forest. Canterbury's now built walls, so we can go straight up the temple with that. Warwick's got its first person up and running. Sue so have nearly completed their project, the lighthouse. The lighthouse prevents triremes from uh, running, getting adrift at sea, which is annoying. And then the second turn, we've already discovered warrior code. So, the samurai of feudal Japan lived by a doctrine known as Bushido, or way of the warrior. This code of behavior stressed such virtues as loyalty, courage, and politeness. The honor of the warrior could only be maintained if the rules of the code were followed. A similar code of behavior known as chivalry was later developed under the feudal system in medieval Europe. Although the strict adherence to both Bushido and chivalry were abandoned along with the feudal system in the 1800s. Certain principles of discipline and behavior inherent in these systems can still be found in the military today. So now I want iron working, as that gives us slightly better troops, basic troops, attacking people. So builds that. And let's build the walls there. Nottingham's built a library. Now give me seven production of the in um, science, and we've got trade of two. Now we're building the chapel, so I'm going to build an aqueduct. Start building an aqueduct straight away. London requires an aqueduct, I know, but we are halfway towards Michelangelo's chapel. So by the time that they've built an aqueduct, we will have built the chapel, which is great. So I'm now going to build a road here. Now, I've slept them there. 
York is now building them. I'm not going to build buy it. It's quite expensive. I'm just going to build a temple. Build a temple now, so we can change and build a library there. Yeah, and we discovered iron working. Some examples of iron ornamentation date back to 4000 BC, but the use of iron for tools, weapons, and other practical purposes did not become common until much later. Prior to this time, bronze was the most widely used metal for such purposes. Although the term Iron Age denotes a period of time starting around 1000 BC, iron replaced bronze as the metal of choice at different times in different places. Iron is more common than both copper and tin. The compound metals of bronze, the component metals of bronze, but iron is seldom found in a free state. It is most commonly found mixed with other minerals and elements. In order to be used, the iron must be separated from the ore. Once this technique was developed the for and forges hot enough to melt iron were developed, iron working became commonplace. Worked iron was harder, less brittle and could hold a much sharper edge than bronze. Iron has remained an important metal throughout history and is one of the major components in the production of steel. So now I want to get bridge building I think. And that will enable me to start thinking about railroad. So I'm going to build a, a road here. Oh, as Hastings builds another a library, massively increasing the production of science there. And here I think I'm also going to start building an aqueduct. Just ready for when I can oh, no, when I can um, get the chapel up and running. So they've built their second unit, so I can build city walls in here. And fortify there. And London now has roads everywhere except in these two areas here. So I'm now going to irrigate both of those and build roads down there. Right, so York has now built its military units. So I'm going to start building an aqueduct there as well. And they are now going to go and basically kill anyone I can find down here. So Germany has got Great Wall. And London has built Michelangelo's Chapel. And with that, I'm going to build an aqueduct. It's only going to take five turns. And then it will enable my population to grow to 12 and that will enable me to put people in here, here, here and here which will increase my productions even more. So let's road there. Yay! Okay let's make landfall into the defensible areas and then I'm going to, oh we've got bridge building now Humans have been constructing crude bridges from the first time they laid logs across a stream or a river they needed to cross. Although a brick arch bridge is said to have existed in Babylon in 1800 BC, most bridges of this time period were probably made of wood. The Romans developed bridge building to a degree that it took Western, medi it took Western medieval engineers many years to match. Roman bridges were often composed of several stone arches which supported a flat road. Bridges of this type date back to early as 219 BC. <laughs> 780 BC. It wasn't until the mid-1800s that bridge designs began to incorporate metal for added strength and permanence. Early truss bridges used wooden trusses bound with iron tie rods. By 1850, wooden trusses gave ways to steel. Modern bridges incorporate designs ranging from concrete and steel arches to steel girder and suspension styles. The development of modern bridges were uh, constructed of durable materials was vital to the expansion of the world's railway, railroad and highway systems. So now we've got that. I'm thinking we'll just get pottery because we can. That shouldn't take more than a couple of turns. So an emissary from Emperor Tokugawa of the Japanese wishes to speak with you. Will you receive him? Yeah, I'll give him say hello, and then I'll destroy them, unless they pay me lots of money. So uncooperative Japanese em emissary. We prepared a permanent peace treaty confirming the friendship between our two peoples and fixing our mutual borders for all time. Will you sign it? 
No, terms are not acceptable. Perhaps we could throw in 300 gold to make the offer your, worth your while. Yep, I think for 300 gold we can do it. We affirm this treaty of eternal friendship and goodwill between the people of the Japanese and English civilizations. We shall withdraw our forces from your territory at once. Consider this discussion complete. Okay, well, let's move our people around and let's move our boat up. Okay, let's irrigate there. We are the most advanced civilization in the world. Japanese are the worst. Okay. Let's irrigate there. Now, boats don't count in the city, in, in area. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Nottingham has built its aqueduct and can start growing further. Um, and what have we got there? We've got two tax, seven university. We need more money, basically. Although, to be fair, we are getting quite a lot. So I think I'm just going to go and build. Uh, university is going to take 32 turns, but it's going to be worth it. Ooh, let's see, we have a neck here. Um, I'm going to draw troops to the nearest city. Capital's built a library. And what have we got in Canterbury? Marketplace, I think. Well, no, we'll go Aqueduct there as well. London's built its Aqueduct really quickly, which is nice. And I'm going to go for the workshop now. Um, oh, that was nasty of them. Right, I'm going to send this back. I'm going to put them sleeping there. And I'm going to head down. Oh, I've met the Zarkari Catherine Russians. Let's give her an it. So she's a cordial Russian emissary. Message from the most wise, Zarina, Catherine the Great, blah, blah, blah. And peace with our evil neighbors, the Japanese. We request you cancel this treaty at once. No, but the Japanese are our friends. We laugh at your excuse for civilization. We will refrain from crushing it underfoot if you will give us the secret of invention. We're not intimidated by threats. No, your terms are not acceptable, you assholes. So be it. Demand tribute for our patients. And ignore our feeble threats. Let's attack them. Declare war. We've discovered pottery. The invention of pottery was essential to the develop development of agricultural societies. To get the most out of seasonal crops and domesticated animals, the tribe needed sturdy waterproof containers in which to store and protect surplus food. The discoveries of, this, of properties of clay and the invention of the kiln and the potter's wheel made it possible to build such containers. The earliest examples of Western pottery date back as early as 6500 BC. Most of the examples from this period were strictly utilitarian. Although use continued to be primarily practical, decorative pottery soon became a ritualistic and aesthetic art form in cultures all over the world. Some of the most impressive examples of artistic pottery came from the pre-Columbian cultures of South America and the Ming Dynasty in 14th century China. So, but since we had the pyramids, we didn't really need to research that until now. Because the pyramids gave us granary, which a pot pottery unlocks through that. Okay, seafaring. I think should be my next one, because I think that protects my triremes from being sunk. So let's bring you up, and let's bring you down and attack. I don't like the Romans. Hastings built an aqueduct. I'm going to change that. They're bringing in two tax turn. No, I need some more. I'll need more money. Well, now population exceeds two million. Okay, I think I'm going to end this episode here. We have discovered two civilizations, a, a truckload of new technologies. We've built many more cities. We've now got filled out our island of seven cities. I'm beginning to uh, sweep a new island. We've got a second military unit ready to come down here and hopefully come in here. Since the Japanese are the weakest civilization in existence at the minute, I think it's fair that we let them live. And we'll, we can take out the Romans, I feel, because, you know, they just irritate me. 
Um, and I like the Japanese, just in general. So, anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, it's picking up the pace, and I'm picking up the pace with it, so I'm, I'm making quicker moves and explaining a little bit less of what I'm doing each time. Um, uh, if that works, I will continue it. If it doesn't work, I will I will slow it down a little bit more. But we shall see. Anyway, again, thank you very much, and goodbye.